I'm Jo and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about my most anticipated releases in 2020. There are so many books that are coming out that I'm so pumped to read. And I think the next one actually comes out in about a week. I'm very excited, so let's start with the first one. The first one is called Belle Revolt from Lindsay Miller and it comes out on February 4th. Um, but since I'm so bad at remembering things, I wrote it all down so I gotta read my notes, I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is a sapphic romance and it's about a noble lady and uh, who wants to be a physician and a commoner who wants to be trained in magic. And the noble lady is called Emily and the common one is called Annette and they swap places. All the while there is a war raging in their country that is based on lies and they uh, have the rebellion to end this war. Umbella World is... I gotta... Uh, <laughs> uh, I gotta pre-order this while I have time. Because actually, like last year I wanted to read Fire's War and then I didn't pre-order it so I I still haven't bought it and I still haven't read it and I really want to but I never, I never um, remember to actually buy it so that's really sad. The next one is Ink in the Blood by Kim Smekal and it comes out on February 11th and it also has the queer MC. I think almost all of my uh, most anticipated releases have queer MC so... Um, and it weaves together uh, tattoos, uh, well, tattoo magic, faith, and eccentric theater. Uh, it's about the best friends Celia and Anya, and they are inklings for the uh, religion of Propheta. And then, after some time, they find out the truth about this religion, and then they leave uh, to join the traveling theater group uh, called. Uh, rebel mob and that enrages the divine of Propheta which they never actually believed existed but apparently it does and now Anya and Celia have to protect their new family from that divine entity. The next one is called The Blossom and the Firefly by Sherry L. Smith and it comes out on February the 18th and it takes place in Japan in 1950, uh, 1945 and it's about Tao who's a talented violinist and also a kamikaze pilot and then it's the other main character is Hana and she was buried alive during the bomb break during the war and then the song brings them together uh, but also the war tears them apart and they have about eight days to live an entire life before Tao was sent on his mission. That book will probably tear me apart. I can already feel it, it's going to be so sad and I'm going to cry a lot. Like I don't I don't know if I actually will but it sounds very heart wrenching. The next one is called Witches of Ash and Ruin by E. Latimer and it comes out in March 3rd and it has bisexual main characters together uh, and one of them has uh, OCD and there's a possible sapphic romance but we don't know more yet and it's about a witch that's called Daina and she wants nothing more than to ascend to become a full witch in a small Irish town. But things complicate when a new coven arrives and there is also a serial killer going around. And to get Dania together with the granddaughter of the new coven leader uh, called Mina, which is funny because Mina is also a German word, it's like mine. I thought it was funny. And they together they have to stop the serial killer. And like 
it has witches, it has crime, and it has queer romance. That is literally all my heart desires <laughs> right now. I love, I love like all this witch stuff. I'm so obsessed with it. So obsessed with that right now. I have I read about like three mangas right now that all around, uh, all revolve around witches and like witch aesthetic, and then it's so cute. I love it. <laughs> And the next one is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, which also comes out in March 3rd. And it takes place in Edwardian, uh, Edwardian London, and it's about James and Lucy Herondale's life that changes when the Carstairs and the Blackthorns arrive in town. But with them comes a terrible plague. Um, we don't know much more yet, except that they are plunged into a wild adventure and they need to save the world from this plague. Um, I'm so excited for these! <laughs> like more physical stuff and more parandales and horses and all of them babies. Yeah, I'm so excited for that. It's going to be so pretty. And also the cover is so amazing. It is so pretty. Already right, like The next one is called The, uh, the Betrothed by Kira Kess and it comes out in May 5th and it's about Lady Hollis whose dream comes true after she captures the heart of uh, King Jameson uh, but then soon she realizes that it's not her perfect happy um, her perfect happy Jesus perfect happy ever after that she always imagined and then she meets a commoner who turns the whole world upside down. Like, Kira Kess books are so amazing. Like, I love to read them because they're so easy to read. And it's, there were some books you have to like really force yourself through the whole one because like, you want to read it, but it's also so exhausting to read. But Kira Kess books are just so nice to read. I love them. I love the writing style. is called Clap When You Land by um, Elizabeth uh, Widow. I'm so sorry, I have no idea how to pronounce her name. Um, and it also comes out on May 5th. Um, it's about Camino Reyes, from, uh, who has a Dominican uh, Republic, uh, what do you call it, like a uh, birth? Like his, her father was born in the Dominican Republic and he dies in a crane plash, a plane crash. <laughs> so sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. Um, and then she finds out she has a sister in the United States. Um, the father lived two lives apparently. And the story is about how they find each other and how they grapple what is it like to have a sister and what it means to them. It just sounds like a beautiful book about sisterhood and how you, like, it's a drastic change when you find out your father has left you life and has another family in, this, in a, a whole other country. That is insane. Um, it's just really interesting to read this, I guess. Or I hope. <laughs> it just sounds really good. The next one is called Goethe. Girl Serpent Thorn by uh, Melissa Borchardus uh, and it comes out on May 12th and it's about a princess called Zoraya who was cursed to be poisonous to everything she touches and then of course she lives hidden away because of it and then a demon in the dungeons tells her uh, well holds all the answers that uh, she needs for her freedom and then uh, she finds out that the young man seems to see a past with her curse and wants to get to know her. And then her choices lead to consequences, of course, as always with some certain choices. And she begins to question who she really is. Is she actually a human or is she a demon? The next one is called Felix Ever After by uh, Kaysen Calendar and it also comes out on May 12th. 
It's a, it has a trans main character and obviously called Felix and he is confronted with Latin transphobia and the revenge plan leads him to catfishing that ends him in a quasi uh, love triangle and all this is like his uh, part of his journey to self-discovery and yeah I think it would be really interesting to read about the trans main character. I don't really see it that or I have seen it that often in the past few years. Um, it's cool that finally all those queer books are like really coming out and like hopefully coming big. So let's hope it's as good as it sounds. The Gilded Ones by Nanina Forma. Uh, it comes out on May 26, 6, and it's about Decca, and she has to pass a blood ritual, and it's, it's like you have to like they check the color of your blood, and if it has a correct color, then you will become a member of the village, or if it doesn't have the correct color, then you will be cast out. Um, it turns out that she has the wrong color, of course, and it's gold. And she has to decide whether she wants to stay in her village as an outcast or join an army of the emperor consisting of girls just like her. And only they can defeat the greatest threat to the empire. Like, it is such a new concept. Like, for me, it sounds so cool. Like, like, ooh, I'm so excited for this one. It's like one of my most anticipated ones. Like, this whole video is about anticipated uh, books, but like this one in particular is like, yeah, I think it's like really high on this list. And the next one is The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare. It comes out on September 1st. And it's about Manga Spain who has acquired the Lost Book of the White, which is a powerful spell of dark magic. And many want to claim this one for themselves, and they are willing to do anything for it. So it's probably about Magnus and Alec and the squad protecting this book from like the bad people. And as far as I know, they are uh, is the Lost Book of the White is the Second one to the Red Skulls of Magic, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And yeah, it's so much more Magnus and Alec. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's great. Can't wait for it. I also like recently uh, she revealed the cover of it and it doesn't fit. like it doesn't uh, really go it goes well with the first cover and it kind of annoys me. Like, because the cover of The Lost Book of the White is, uh, looks more like her previous book covers, while the Red Scrolls of Magic look completely different. They are like in a, uh, like they are drawn and not like a, not, not like an edited photography. And uh, I didn't like the first cover at all. It just doesn't it doesn't fit. And now it fits even less. And like, why would you do that? And well, like, if you have a different cover, uh, well, what is it? Um, if you have a drawn cover, then the other ones in the series should have a similar style as well, because it just doesn't look good on the shelf. In my opinion, some people do not care about this, but I, I do care about this a lot. So the, it's kind of sad that they don't fit together. Maybe she will bring out another uh, version of the Red Scrolls of Magic so that I can buy that and then give the other one away. Let's see. And then the next one is called uh, Ruin Song by Julia Ember and it comes out on 24th of November. And it is also a sapphic romance and it's about uh, Cadence who is a powerful mage who is forced by the queen of the country to torture the disgraced nobility. Um, she doesn't want that. And then she is reunited with her childhood friend, who is a noblewoman with ties to the Allegro Rebellion. And she has to make a choice. Free her country 
from the tyrant or follow her footsteps and become a monster herself. So, so I have no idea what was wrong with me today. Like my language is just like I have no idea what that is today. It's kind of annoying. Um. For the last one I couldn't find a release date, uh, maybe she will reveal it in the next few weeks, uh, but uh, on Goodreads they just said, it just said that it comes out in 2020 and not exactly when and I couldn't find it on Amazon either or in general in the, on the internet, I couldn't really find it. But it is called A Miracle of Roses by Diana Pinchuda? Whatever. Uh, it's a Zephic romance and it's a retelling of a prodigy's uh, miracle. It's about a princess that enters a bargain with an enchanted Mora uh, to reverse her gift that turns all the food she touches into flowers. Yeah. And I just thought it would be like a really nice concept because I love fairy tale retellings, they are amazing. And I don't know much about Portuguese, Portuguese um, fairy tales or miracles. Um, that would be fun to read this. That's the last one I also couldn't find a release date. It's called The Queen's Council by Emma uh, Theriot. And it's a reimage of Disney's Belle as a young ruler of France in the early days of the revolution. French Revolution, of course, and all the while by being caught with her new role as royal and her provincial roots. Um, I think I remember reading somewhere that this is supposed to be like a series um, with, uh, with Disney, uh, different Disney princesses. And I think it would be so cool. It's just like the Portuguese one, it's like a retaining of fairy tales, and I'm just like, Oof. I love it. It is great. <laughs> I really hope that this book is going to be nice. Not, then I would be really disappointed because it's one of one of my most anticipated ones. Um, yeah. So these are my books. I also wanted to include the Hunger Games sequel, a uh, prequel. I'm sorry, uh, but then it came out. Like then this um, snippet came out, and then it's like with President Snow, and I'm like, ugh. Why would you do that, Sydney Collins? There are so many different other characters that you wrote that are so amazing and that would have been more interesting than a bloody dictator that just kills people because he can. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, just, uh, it just didn't doesn't sit right with me. But on the other end, uh, it is just a snippet. And maybe uh, the uh, book is not about romanticizing snow, which I hope it's not. Uh, because I kind of want to give it a chance, but then again, I don't. You know, you, do you feel what I mean? It's just like... Mm. I don't want to cancel it, maybe it's actually not romanticizing snow and then, then because that would be cool if it if she would just be like, oh well, he was an evil bastard from the beginning. So, you know, that would be amazing. But it probably isn't. But I'm still, maybe, maybe I'm going to buy it anyways. We'll see. So yeah, that are my most anticipated books of 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video and bye!